Welcome to Black Ink Cinema Podcast. We are at the home of Jim and Tonic Distillery, based in Stratford. And if you can hear any noise in the background, that's because there's a few people enjoying some cocktails. But I'm here joined with the amazing Monroe Martin. Hello. Hola. <laughs> Hola. Hello. 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 Um, he will be telling us a little bit about himself and why he picked the film that he picked. Uh, what brings you here to London? Um, well, I originally came here as a, a vacation. This was a gift to my wife. Oh. And then, once I booked it, I'm like, yo, can I? Like, <laughs> I need to perform. I need to. Oh. I'm like, this is a comedy city. This yeah, is, yes, of course. So, I set up some dates. I'm here. I'm having fun. I've done three shows so far. Mm -hmm. I got two more left. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm having a great time. How have you found... The difference in audiences, the U.S. audience, the U.K. Well, here's the thing about the U.S. All audiences aren't the same. Mm. Like New York, New York gives you that global feel. So New York is the closest I get to performing for, like it'll be the closest to performing for people over here. Yeah. Right? That's because New York is very international. Yes. Um, where if I go to like Charlotte, North Carolina, it's a different yeah. feeling because everybody's from charlotte down there right so also here's the thing that people hate hearing but conservatives back in america are the best audiences <laughs> why do you just, say that because they just don't care okay that's they're interesting just meaning not saying they're rude or anything they just don't they allow you to say what you need to say to okay. make your point okay. to be like oh that's funny where there's other audiences, like liberal audiences, will sometimes be like, mm -mm, don't you say okay. that. Don't, oh, mm -mm. yes. The PC police. So, yeah. So, <laughs> and I haven't dealt with that here. Okay. Oh, that's, you know what I mean? It's not like I've said, yeah, I've said, he's seen my set. Am yeah. I allowed to point off camera? Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Can I break the fourth wall? <laughs> this is, about, this is yeah. about movies, right? So, Shout out, Adam. And storytelling. What up, Adam? <laughs> but Adam's seen my show. Yeah. And um, yeah, it gets, it's real. People say it's dark, but I don't think it's dark. I just talk about my real life and what I've been through. And I use that as layer to also just say goofy shit. Yes. And the audience didn't get sensitive. Yeah. They're like, oh, no, bring it on. Okay, all right. I think it's that yeah, British yeah, yeah. humor. I love we've got, it. We've got a dark sense of humor. I it's love weird. it. I, it ain't <laughs> we weird. We laugh at Embrace things it. that we shouldn't laugh at. <laughs> no, laugh at all of it. You, you touched upon what you've been through in mm -hmm. your life. Uh, yeah. For those people who don't know, do you want to just elaborate a little bit more? So, on that? from Philadelphia, PA. <laughs> Born and raised. Born and raised. <laughs> Will Smith. <laughs> Still in my heart, baby. <laughs> pause. <laughs> so like, oh, no, not pause. No, no, I'm playing. I'm playing. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. We love Will. We love Will. I love Will, man. Yes. He, like, just because you smack mistakes, somebody, you get, like, I'm not going to disown you. Yeah, yeah, no. Chris Rock came from Philly. Yeah, we've all you done, know? yeah, this time. Yeah. Fine. But um, from Philadelphia, grew up in the foster care system. That's really yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. It was and up and down experience, yeah. but it was, nonetheless, it just was a, it taught me a lot about life. It actually prepared me for what I do now, because I bounced around a lot. I lived in wow. 15 different homes. So you're adaptable. You yeah. learn to be adaptable like that. Yeah, I can make friends quick. Mm. I can get acclimated really fast and get comfortable. So yeah, yeah very adaptable. Yeah. So. I almost think as well sometimes because you're having to move around so much and mm -hmm. be adaptable that you learn how to be likable mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. which I think is a skill in itself. Yeah. Because, you know, you have to quickly fit in. Yeah. Have you found that? Yeah, I think mm. so. I think the key is just to likability is just mm. being yourself. It just made me adaptable. Growing up in foster care and bouncing around and stuff like that, it just allows, it allowed me to just like get comfortable and also just be myself, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you, off camera, we were talking about something that you wanted to do, um, which I oh, found really oh, interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about um, just introducing people of color. We started off saying people of color, mm -hmm. but I wanted to just introduce kids that are in care to this side of the business. Yes. Because people see entertainment and they go, oh, you got to be 
you got to be a superstar in exceptional. order to, yeah. yeah, and it's like, you can, there's entry level jobs here where yes. you can get a feel for the business and you can see if you like it and see where you figure fit it, in. Yeah, exactly. Man. Figure out what suits mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we were yeah most about of them, that. most of the after school programs that I attended when I was younger, mm. they all, they made sure you were ready for life, yeah. but it maybe wasn't the life you wanted. Yes. Like I was A plus certified at like, um, what is it like 16 that means i can fix computers and stuff sick but i don't do it now like i know how to oh do God, it so you could have gone into engineering i could have but <laughs> i engineer these jokes <laughs> tell them <laughs> tell them but yeah like they would like try to get you to do to go to the army or yeah. uh, work in sanitation and stuff and mm. like i get it they're trying, trying to, to make sure safe, that you yeah that yeah. you do something guaranteed yeah with, with something that has like a guaranteed success rate, but mm. nothing's guaranteed. But they're really. not really catering to the child or yeah. to the child's abilities as well, which I think don't. a lot of teachers don't yeah. do as well. Yeah, let absolutely. Let alone the care system. And mm-hmm. it's just like, you only realize that when you're a bit older and you're like, mm, yeah. they didn't really hone in on my, my talents there. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't even get as mad as, at that because they don't know. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they don't, most adults, don't think there's anything past what they can see their or their reality. own capabilities yes, yeah, exactly. and they put that on people yeah. younger than them parents especially you know like, do you can't do no backflip because i can't <laughs> do no backflip. exactly this ain't a backflip in family yeah fear is yeah. instilled early doors yes, and uh, absolutely yeah to control yeah. the so mind that was the one thing that i would say i had is no one in fear in, in, instilled that fear in me okay that's good that, and it's weird that's that brilliant. none of these foster parents i live with ever try to make me be afraid to try anything in life they but they never encouraged it they're yeah like, what the fuck you want to do yeah so you grow up here and i don't care do what you want mm. and then you get older and then you get a couple of people who go you can do what you want and you go oh, okay oh, oh maybe i'll try it yeah, try this <laughs> maybe, shit. yeah. Maybe i'll do it but then you probably get a lot more people that are like, no, you shouldn't do that because yeah. they can't have, understand it. Yeah. I only had like maybe like one or two people who were like, I don't think it'll work out. And they're like, yeah, New York is going to it's gonna eat you up. I love New York. Oh, I love living in New York. So sinister. Gosh. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I haven't yeah. been. I'd love to go, though. No, no, no. Oh, my no. God, you got to come. I will. Yeah, I will. Yeah, that yeah, is yeah. It's on the list. It's yeah. top of the list. Um, you were talking about being... Uh, your childhood mm-hmm. were you a funny kid I think so I don't know if they would think <laughs> I was funny were you like you a prankster I mean? or were you just like funny making I people I think laugh? I was I was the person who who would point out shit and mm-hmm. like be like what what is, what is this oh okay you know what smart I mean? kid pranks not really but like stating the obvious or the not so obvious that was also me mm. but also I, I knew adult like um like, I already knew, like, certain things, like, innuendos. Like, I know oh, how to okay. use innuendos. So, I was kind of mature for my yeah. age. And certain certain adults, they're, like, they, they take to it. They're like, oh, he can hang. And then some, like, get the <laughs> no, hell out of here. Like, yo, you're a child. Yeah. Like, you shouldn't be knowing it. Like, because I would laugh at certain things they would say. Right. If, like, two adults were talking and so they would, like, 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 say something. Like, <laughs> and they were like, what the hell you know about this? It's like, nah. He grown. Yeah. Yeah. So... And okay. I think that's a sign of, um, like, that you, you're you probably naturally funny. Yes. If you can understand humor above you. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I yeah, understand yeah. humor that I'm not even a part of. Like, I came out here, and some of the comics were doing very local things. But right. because, because I understood, like, the just the context of it i'm like oh that's funny yeah oh that's funny yeah and i may oh, not brilliant. understand the, the the terminology and the slang and stuff but i get the cadence and i'm going oh that's why they laughed at that yeah. <laughs> you understand it you're mm-hmm, able to mm-hmm. put two and two together yeah. um do you find because of your upbringing you know going around foster parent and foster homes and stuff mm-hmm. Did you use comedy to help you with... As much as I could. Okay, yes. As much as I could. Yeah. But it would probably... It probably got me in trouble more than it got me out of trouble. Okay. You know how many after-school programs I got kicked out of? No way. I got kicked out of so many after-school programs. But why, though? Just being funny. Because they think funny is disruptive. Okay, Because when you yeah. roast people, when you're like an adult, if you're a child and you have the ability <laughs> to roast an adult to the point where they... Like actually look at themselves and mm. they go, "What the fuck is wrong with me?" When yeah. this kid is accurate, like when yeah. you're, 
You ever roast an adult? No. Never? No, I would usually get a backhand if uh, that happened, as a kid anyway. Wait, so in school, just y'all never did that? Like, y'all never just roasted the teacher just for coming to I school with, like, trash? I was actually talking about this on? just the other day, that I was actually a really good kid. Like, I actually oh. wish I was more... Like, did yeah, that. Yeah, like, oh I did that God. more. I was just... Pretty, I was a prefect. <laughs> That's Yo, how good I was. But look, you got your own show. I don't have my own goddamn show, so... No, no, I wish I lived right more of a kid instead of being taking things so serious. Actually. Oh my god, I don't think I live like a kid. I just, it's just a, I tried to, I tried to, ex- to explain this to an audience one day. I was yeah. like, it's a weird life when you grow up and then you start to see adults as like, oh no, yeah, that. Where you go, oh, oh just, no, you don't know what you're doing. Absolutely. It's a weird No, thing. I did that and my thing is yeah. more challenging. So mm-hmm. I would challenge adults when yeah. they would say certain things. Yeah. And be like, that doesn't make sense. See, then we the same. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. We the same. But that would get me in trouble. Yeah, so that yeah. would get me in trouble. I use humor. You just I use just your, straight your, up. Your wit. <laughs> I'm yeah, just straight up. Just I'm like, like hey. no, maybe yeah. that doesn't make. Yeah, and then clashes. And you see how they react. Oh my god, it's like, how dare you? So that's the yeah. same with humor. You Got like you. you saying funny things. Mm. You get everybody to laugh, and the teacher's like, no, nah, no, nah, not at my expense. Oh god, <laughs> not at my expense. So I would I get kicked imagine. out of after school programs. Yeah. Some of the after school programs that I got kicked out of. Once I like, I remember my first time being on TV. I got. How old were you? I was like 27, okay. 28. Mm. Yeah. And it was last comic standing. And like immediately after that, all the after school programs that ever kicked me out was like, yo, we would love for you to come back oh, and perform. Oh, hell no. Hell no. No. You kicked me out no, for the you, same re- shit. Exactly. And now you want to be. No, that's really rude. <laughs> I, I find that really it, the, audacity, the, the audacity though, though yeah, as well for them yeah. to pick up the phone and be mm-hmm. like um hey. so <laughs> and I'm like okay alright that's fine rude yeah so are there any comedians past or present who you think are the best at turning tragedy into comedy um past and present mm-hmm. Richard Pryor of course mm. love Richard Pryor I love um Damon Wayans. Yes. Damon Wayans is great. I don't think he gets brought up enough. Yeah. Um, Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, obviously, yeah. Bill Burr, Patrice O'Neill. Then all my friends are really good, too. Derek Gaines, Dave yeah. Temple, Chloe Hilliard, Che. I got a lot of... I, yeah. I like to surround myself around, like, comics who are, like, really, like, trying to master it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But there's so many comics that... I think are like really good at mm. like taking something fucked up yeah. and then just or and making it into beautiful origami. It was like here's this fucked up thing I've been through. Yeah. A swan. <laughs> a dove. Just, That's holy like shit. my favorite thing yeah. about comedians. Mm-hmm. It's like they turn just something outlandish yeah. into like funny and I'm like yeah. I shouldn't be laughing at this, yeah. but it's really funny. But you should give in but to you that. Should, no, absolutely, I laugh. Yeah. And then I question myself afterwards. Yeah. I'm like, that is don't really Don't question. Terrible. <laughs> don't question yourself. Don't look at my fucked up. Well, why is that? Yeah, I'm fucked up. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, that's what I love about humor. Mm-hmm. You just, it's, it's good to laugh. And there's no point wallowing, you know? Mm-hmm. You might as well just. It ain't going to do nothing for It's you. not going to do anything. Yeah, the so. day's still going to move forward. This is it. Mm-hmm. So that's why I think it's one of my favorite things about comedy. Yeah. Same. Able to do that. Well, thank you. I feel like I know you a lot better. Um, thank you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> on that note, what's your. I need to hear this your British accent. accent. This is my British accent. <laughs> bro. What's up, bro? bro? <laughs> Love it. I thought it was bruv, but it's bro. Well, I've we say bruv bro as well, but bro is more. Bro is more proper. Yeah. Well, no, we just say that more now. Yeah, what's up, bro? There was a time where bruv was the thing, but now bro is like... Why they go to bro? I don't know. It's just the evolution of the street talk. And it's very low. Yeah. It's not It's not loud. It's very... Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we mumble a lot. Yeah. I can fit in here. (laughs) You'll be... Yo, give me a year. You'll be a good time. Yeah. (laughs) Give me like a year. Hello. You have a lot uh, of jokes, actually. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that you'll just see. You're just like, this is this is comedic, and yeah. they don't even know it's funny. I can't wait. Here's the thing that I noticed first: very confrontational. Oh, are we? But not in a way that it gets physical. Just in a way where it's just like, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be honest yes. because I don't like this moment, and I'd rather just 
get it out versus holding it in. Mm-hmm. And I and it's on everything. It's in every exchange. Mm-hmm. Like I went to um, get Chinese food with the producers of the show that I did with Adam. Oh, he was you. there, but he wasn't. He didn't get Chinese food with us. Mm. And we walked in, and then the the people who sat us were very just. Yeah, yeah, abrupt. Everybody, every, and even the way that they were speaking to each other, everybody was just very like, "You didn't know to that, so I'm not putting it in," like that type of thing. And well, they're just, just like, rude. That's not even what? rude. No. That's just rude. No, but it was like it was everywhere. But I think that's why when I go abroad, that I'm like, so, "Oh my god, these people are yeah. so nice." Mm-hmm. Like everyone is so nice because, especially in London, I think outside of London you won't get that experience. No. But I in didn't London, think it was anything wrong with it. Mm, no, you shouldn't. They shouldn't be just. They, they were be very nice. just rude. <laughs> yeah. But it was refreshing. It was very like just. Oh, you got the real direct. British experience, okay? They, yeah, they were just direct. <laughs> yeah. And they said what they wanted to say. And if you said something like, I'm trying yeah, to they're remember. They're quick with it. They're quick with it, they're and I loved it. it. Yeah, I was yeah. just like, okay, because it doesn't get physical. No, no, no. Everyone knows where they stand. Yeah. We're like, okay, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> yeah, this is. Yeah. This is how we're doing it. Okay, fine. Like I learned, carry on is fuck off. Carry on. If somebody tells you to carry on, like that happened at a comedy show. No way. And somebody was like, carry on, and the audience was like, ooh, and I was like, that was that wasn't rude. That was nice. And then afterwards, they was like. He basically told him to fuck off, like keep it, keep it, keep moving. it moving. Yeah, it was, and yeah. I was like, well, oh, but that was, that was very just. <laughs> and nobody was like, what? What the fuck? You saying yeah, to me? yeah, yeah. I think we're, we're yeah. very good at talking, yeah. not the physical stuff as much, yeah. but. And growing up, being from Philly, that would absolutely escalated. Escalated. It <laughs> ended in something physical. Oh shit! Okay. And I like that. It's just like what? Okay. All right. Mm. Yeah. And they just go about their day. <laughs> I'm like, yo, like this, this is, is the cool. life. This is cool. Yeah. Because yeah. you don't have to hold shit in. No. You yeah. Just, yeah. We do let things out. What well, y'all, y'all, like everyone walks aggressive. Yeah. There Especially on no, the underground. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. London underground. So many you people almost stroll. bump me, but they don't bump me. But, but you're they, tall, so it's yeah. all right. But when you're, you're like, short like me, yeah. Oh, it's a war zone. You're yeah. Like oh my god, I have to walk with my elbows out. Oh, so fast. you just take the hips. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my workout. That's my that's my upper body workout every day. <laughs> that's it. Um but we are here yeah. to celebrate all things black cinema. All things black cinema. And you chose mm-hmm. the Wayne Brothers film Don't Be a Menace to Society whilst drinking your juice in the hood. Wait, you ain't never seen a movie? The way you said that because it's a, makes me think you I hadn't never seen been, it. I well, always just say don't be a menace. And don't just, be a menace. Yeah, okay, I, I had just to put, there. But I don't say the whole. I, know, I didn't I know if he'd seen it or not. Oh no, so he's seen it. There yeah, for yeah, him. yeah, yeah. But no, I would be, assume. Okay, I have to right, say right. the whole. But don't be a menace. Don't for, be a menace, people. The one people. of the greatest comedies ever. So why did you pick Don't Be a Menace? It's just one of the first comedies that I saw as a child. I would say that movie came out what ninety six, ninety seven. It was big. Yo. Huge. It was the first. 96. 96. It so then was, I wasn't in high school. No, We I weren't didn't. in high school. We were young. We were but too, I didn't yeah. see that movie until, until yes, later. Yes, right? same here. And I remember seeing all the adults talk about it and like make the kids go upstairs when yeah. it's on and stuff like that. So when I finally got a chance to sit down and watch it, I was in high school. I was in ninth grade. Yeah. And... I was glued from the jump, yeah. from the opening scene. It was like, they shot my baby. They <laughs> shot my baby. I just say mine, right? Like, yeah. from that to just shot by shot, everything was a, like, every scene ended in a punchline. Yes. But not, not even that. It was, all hoods are different. All poor cultures are different, but mm. they have similarities. Yeah. And the fact that they were able to take tell the story about a west coast hood and this west coast culture that i don't really identify with but i understand Mm because i see it outside in philly Mm -hmm. and i was able to see them make fun of it and not really glorify it like we're kind of taught to absolutely you know what i mean and watching them make fun of it was and and not be called sellouts and all that stuff Mm. and they did it in a way that was tasteful disruptive it was just so many things at the same time and for me to recognize that at a young age yeah uh, i had my friends watching yeah. every time they came to visit me i'd be sitting on the couch they're what the fuck are you watching i'm like oh, i'm watching this and they're like come on yeah and then like three minutes in they're like 
Yes. <laughs> we could have been going to play basketball or whatever, like but trying nine. to go to the mall, they were and then we would well. just sit down and they start laughing from beginning to end. That movie was great. I loved how yeah. it was a spoof of like all of the hood films. All of the hood all films. of the hood films mm-hmm. put together, mm-hmm. and you could literally scene by scene see exactly yeah. where it's taken from. Yeah. Um, and it had someone had to take the piss out of yeah. it. Do you know what I mean? Because it was just like sometimes it's just a bit. Yeah. It is silly, mm-hmm. even though it's reality. Yeah. But it was nice that they were able to see the funny side as mm-hmm. we were talking about the right. tragedies into comedy. Um, I think that's what I really appreciated. Yeah. And like you, I didn't watch it until much later. And in high school, it was big. Like yeah. literally, kids would recite word for word phrases from there. Um, even to the point where I hadn't seen it yet, mm-hmm. but I knew a lot of the phrases before Do I'd even we seen it. Have <laughs> a problem. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> it was just so silly. And I don't know how. Um, Marlon managed to keep mm-hmm. that face yeah. twisted like that throughout just, the whole film. Yeah, like that must yeah, have been very just, achy. Yeah. Dude, everything about that movie was amazing. Um, had you seen any other Wayne films before that? Yeah, I seen all uh, before that. Not really. Mm-hmm. I didn't know. Um, I I'm gonna get you sucker was theirs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, that was more of um, him and Robert Townsend, right? Yeah. I think Don't Be a Menace was their, their first film. movie, yeah. their first family film. But before that, it, I think it was him, Robert Townsend, and like maybe other a couple other people. They wrote like Hollywood Shuffle and um, what is that? I'm gonna get you sucker, and then like one other thing. Mm. But I think I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get you sucker was probably the Don't Be a Menace to like my mom, okay, and all of them. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't resonate with me the same as Don't Be a Menace. Even though there was similar humor. Like, I was just talking to Adam and yeah. we were off camera. We were yeah. talking about how sometimes you can reuse certain materials mm-hmm. as a comic, as a writer, mm-hmm. as as a director or whatever. So certain tropes that they use, like the too much gold thing where the guy died of too much gold. Yeah. Yeah, they, they kind of brought that back Yeah. when... They was like, oh, his dad disappeared. Mm. And it was just like his dad, a bunch of gold chains <laughs> on, no face, like you couldn't see who he was. Yeah. So they used that joke again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I didn't know. I thought that was the first time they used that joke. And then you go back and you go, oh, they got it. They did it right that time, but they was able to bring it do back it and do a call back. It's still and it's complete, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just let me see the, the black brilliance, right? Because mm. you see all these great comedy white films like yes. the Mon- in Monty Python films and yes. all that stuff and I think the Wayans brothers are up there oh absolutely and what I, they've they done for be. the culture yeah. like over decades yeah. um, to bring each other in mm-hmm. to work together so I mean like as someone who works in telly and to see their mm-hmm. see the credits and to see executive producer and see all yeah. the background stuff that they do as well it's just so refreshing and so yeah. nice and for them to be consistent enough to do that over a long period mm-hmm. I'm just an absolute yeah. awe of them like and you don't realize how you might take it for granted actually mm-hmm. you don't realize how much they do until yeah. you really look at their body of work and you're like oh my god you're like god damn god goodness, goodness. do these? you ever stop working you, my wife and kids was great oh my goodness yeah that was a great show fantastic show i'm like what the fuck happened can i, I love, say something? Yep, okay say it, all right say it. I'm like, what the hell yeah I, no, they um, did a lot they were great man yeah i wish that makes me wish i had some funny Siblings, like my siblings are funny, but like I don't think they would Not ever funny, sit funny. down <laughs> and write it out. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's commitment as well, yeah. and having that same le- mm-hmm. level of work ethic. Yeah, because you want to work with your family, but mm-hmm. as we know, yeah. not all family can be worked with. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I just be, meet a bunch of people. We start a cult, and all have the same last names. We just agree. To Sounds leave. like a plan. Yeah, here for it. Yeah. <laughs> Watching Don't Be a Menace, I also realized that uh, the character, Dashik, Dashika? Dashiki. 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 She was literally like the ground zero of Regina Hall's yeah. character mm-hmm, in Scary mm-hmm. Movie. Yes. It's literally the same it's person. The, exactly. Like, which I just thought was great. And I had, hadn't realized that mm-hmm. until rewatching it again mm-hmm. for this podcast. But I was just like, I love that, actually, yeah. because I love Regina Hall. I think she's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, no, she was, 
Her, Anna Ferris. Oh my they god, were, scary they movie. were a great team. Oh, they were a great comedy team. Yeah, I would have loved to see more movies with them together. Absolutely, yeah. I think that's probably one of my favorite mm-hmm. way in film. Yeah, yeah, like scary movie one, your two. Which when did you jump off board? I think that I think I jumped off board when they stopped doing them. Yeah, and I think that was the one that Kevin Hart was in. Oh no, Three, I, don't, right? I don't. I don't think I watched that one then. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think that I... was. A, it was still funny. It was. Um, that's when they started using. Um... Was that the one when Kim K was in it? Or maybe I did watch it. Yeah, I think Kim K was in it. It was Anthony Anderson. I don't. What the... Charlie Sheen. I think once Charlie Sheen started being <laughs> a part of them, then it just. Yeah, they didn't, the wings much. didn't do it anymore. Yeah, it became like a Naked Gun feel. Remember? Yeah, those, oh, I, love, yeah, I did love Naked, naked Gun. gun. But, naked Gun was yeah, good. Yeah, I did love Naked Gun. But the, the Wayans were able to do like a, a sense of humor like that. Yes. But be like. Mm, yeah. You know. Yeah. With yeah. a with a yeah, twist. Yeah, like they twisted. Yeah, but yeah. Hit, It's funny <laughs> now. But, it's hilarious. Yeah. I loved it. Mm-hmm. Um, is there any genre you would love to spoof apart from like? Yeah, I'm a, I know I'm going to get called an Uncle Tom and all that stuff. Oh, but I didn't, never I, on this show. I think that I wanted to do like a, a funny slave film. Oh, wow. Like a Django. It, Django so, wasn't comedy, it, but it was, yeah. had elements of... Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to, yeah. Like a Django, but more like a... Like um like a, a 12 Years a Slave Ooh. But not as graphic. Ooh, but not you're graphic, going there. Okay. But the reverse. Not the reverse with white people, but kind of like playing with when slavery was over in that transition. Okay. You know what I'm okay. talking about? When things started to transition from when people found that when people found out they were free. Because not everybody found out no, they were free. No, not at the same, same time. time. No, no. You know what they I mean? were still white people were still like <clears throat> <clears throat> we don't got no mail. None <laughs> <laughs> haven't haven't got anything in my inbox. No, yeah, yeah. no, we <laughs> didn't get the no memo. Mail. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. <laughs> no. no, I'm sorry. I don't no, see sorry. Anything. I think things are still as they Cynthia, are. Anything? No. <laughs> All five uh, years later. No, you're still a slave. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Next next year maybe. So I wanted to. I I think there's some something in there. I think there's yeah. a there's something in that space. It just has to be. That's interesting. Yeah. Because because I'm like what like that part like when things started to the turn and all that stuff and then also i we always get get these game of thrones type shows but we never really see like a black version of those two and i think yeah i funny. love fantasy yeah, and sci-fi yeah, yeah. Black stuff people love fantasy. and it's like why we believe we never... in jesus <laughs> <laughs> You I think we're the original <laughs> yeah. lovers of fantasy, actually. Uh, pretty, pretty gullible, if you ask me. But <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, we are the target audience. Absolutely. So maybe we like, should come on be. Now. Yeah, I've always um, like we can't ride no dragons. We, got, we don't got no but wizards. But in, in the new one, they're trying. They've done that. I've seen a few black people with with blonde, yeah, with white, but it's silver still hair. black people in a white world. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to see like white, like black kings and queens and in medieval and, times. And this, this, yeah, yeah, all that stuff, and they can have white visitors. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They can have white people that come over. And they're share. like, we gave you a Kanda. Get over it, guys. Yeah. That's and that's how I feel. Yes. It's like, guys, yeah. we did this. We did thing. this. So just calm down. No, we need the whole thing. No, yeah. and I think there's and space in that too. Absolutely, yeah. but again. You know, it will take time, but we need to be behind the camera as well yeah. and doing the writing and yeah. having our own studios and doing this in order for that to mm-hmm. happen. Yeah. So. And not even on no spoof shit. No. Not even on any. I like. Dead serious. Yeah. I like pieces where there's black people, but it's also like you can close your eyes and then be like, I don't know what the race of these people are. Yes. I like that. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. it's just about it's the just a story. It's just story, absolutely. And it's not a piece of like, oh, we got to send this message. Mm. Like, black people believe in ghosts too. <laughs> <laughs> you know? it, it doesn't need to be a black version. And yes. that's been my argument that yeah. it's just a story. Yes. The, the, the race of the person is secondary because I can watch any film with any people from any race. Mm-hmm. And I don't, that's secondary to the story, yeah. if that makes any sense. No, that so makes sense. I don't know why they're always trying to make it when it comes to us about yeah. oh, it's a like black the person. wizard's gonna be like, yo, what's up? Yeah, like hocus, is it? Pocus, yeah. motherfucker. <laughs> Break like, yourself. Yeah, they're gonna be holding like, his wand like this or whatever. <laughs> and I go, no, he's just gonna, you know, do the same. Damn. That's why there's a 
a book called of uh, Children of Blood and Bone. I don't know if you've heard no, about it, no, but no, no. I I say it's a combination of like Black Panther meets Harry Potter, mm. um, and it's kind of it's based in Nigeria, mm-hmm. and they've actually got a, a deal with Disney, and they're going to make it into a film, and okay. it's all about like a black. Like blood and bone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a uh, blood and bone. Children blood of blood and bone. Children, of, where did I get yeah. black, black, yeah. blood and bone from? <laughs> and um, but the fact <laughs> is that they're doing magic in there and everything, okay. and I'm like, oh, finally, we yeah. get to see. Yeah. You know, they're gonna have African accents, and yeah. they've always like when it comes to us doing magics, it's juju, yeah. it's witchcraft. But when it's white people, it's oh, it's fun it's magic. Whimsical. It's whimsical. It's fun it's magic. It's pokey pokey. <laughs> so actually, we it's like, nice. Ooh. Yeah, it's all dark yeah. and mystified. So um, I just I'm looking forward to seeing that. Basically, I'm I'm gonna look forward to it too. Yeah, I think yeah. it's it's. it's Why great. is it called Blood and Bone? Oh, I don't know. It is, is a it? is a black author as well. She's young, yeah, okay. uh, brilliant woman. No, um, no, no, but there's a trilogy to it as well. Okay. So all right, yeah. I'll check it out. It's really good when it comes out. I highly recommend right. it. Um, do you have what's your funniest scene in that movie? Even though there's so many. <sighs> Wow. Okay. I think my funniest scene is the grandma fight. Oh my God. She's a badass. Yeah. I think so. I think the grandma fight was the funniest scene because they were going toe to toe. Yeah. Yeah. And she jumps. She's like, talking about when she comes out of the bin and she's doing dead presidents kind of like. Yeah. No. Sick. When she goes, you still hit like. Oh, right. Bitch, the beginning. Right. right yeah. 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 She's actually my favorite character. Yo, she was great on 227. Oh, yeah. She's just yeah, that's like. The old lady from 227, I believe. She's yeah. one of my favorite. Like, yeah. she just has a little one liners, but mm-hmm. she's. She executes them really yeah. well. Brilliant. I she's perfect really in that. Yeah. Is that. It's. um. Where he's talking to, where his dad is laying down the rules and regulations. Yes, of oh, yeah, God. He was just, That's so twisted. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to shave the hair on my balls at night. That just, one. That's very And then twisted. his dad is reading, and then he has to read, read his dad Oh, my God. Story. That was so, so troubling. That was really troubling. It's so funny. It was, I was like, mm, But the satire so in that, that kids are having kids, that yes. they just... Because that was true at that time. Yeah, Even yeah, when yeah. I was younger, there were still, like, kids who were, like, 16 yeah, with yeah, a child yeah. and I'm like you're normal. a child yeah. yeah it became normal like so the, for them to reverse it and be like this kid is bigger than his dad yeah I was like oh, I love the fact they had Vivica like five seconds mm-hmm. in the film yeah. and that was it she was like yeah. you know they don't have any positive like, black women <laughs> and I was like true <laughs> this is my bone to pick with those movies especially in the 90s early 2000s like mm-hmm. you guys really let the black women down I'm not gonna lie um yeah. yeah yeah but they did that on they, absolutely yeah. and she was like okay i gotta go i'm mm-hmm. out um what i liked as well was the message 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 yeah. that was one of my favorite things again bringing in what they don't family know is what they don't show <laughs> yeah. as i was talking uh, the grandma's my mvp mm-hmm. of yeah. the film who is yours the mvp of the film for me is ashtray ashtray yeah <laughs> he's fantastic he's fantastic in that he's so yeah. good I don't think people give Sean yeah. that much credit of like how funny he can be yeah, in the yeah. film. Yeah, no, he's you know? brilliant. Even he's, in White yeah. Chicks. White Chicks, he's the, like he's he he brings it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And he's the straight guy. He's like the black Paul Rudd in these films. Yeah. You know? Oh no, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Paul Rudd is yeah, yeah straight yeah. dude in all the films. Yeah. And he's just good at letting the comedy pass through him. Mm. And, you know, what and I mean? still being the serious yeah. one in the film. Mm-hmm. But I love that. So we will talk about all the Wayne's brothers. Projects. Mm-hmm. Give me your top five. Top five Dwayne Brothers projects. Mm-hmm. Damn. All right. Don't be a menace. Scary movie one, two. I don't. Th- I, I wouldn't count three as there. So, um, mm. my wife and kids. Mm-hmm. Um, eleven and living. Whoa! Can I go? Oh, you're gonna go, go back go. and mm-hmm. say, is it my wife and kids or Wayne's brothers the show? Oh. That was really nice to see as well. My wife and kids. Wayne's Brothers, the show was great, but mm. my wife and kids. Was just, just iconic. Yeah, Tisha Campbell and Damon just made a, yeah. a, a great thing. They yeah. did make a good connection mm-hmm. on screen. Uh, rank the following 90s hood films in yeah, order. Juice, Menace of Society, Boys in the Hood, Higher Learning. <laughs> Damn. Um, I got bad memory now. I'm going to put... Minister Society. Yeah. First. Mm-hmm. I think I watched that more just because when I 
fell in love with Don't Be a Menace, it made me study Okay. Um, Minister society. society. Yeah. I say Minister Society, Juice. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Uh, Boys in the Hood, uh, High Learning. Boys in the Hood, High Learning, mm -hmm. but why don't you have, um, what do you call it on there? Do it. What? Um, I always call it Lean on Me, but it's not called Lean on Me. The John um, with, uh, you smoke crack, don't you? Uh, Morgan Freeman. What's that? You smoke crack, don't you? I mean, he's, oh, we need, we need he's Adam. holding him off the roof. We need Adam. I always call it Lean on Me, but it's Morgan not. Freeman. It's Morgan Freeman. A hood film? Yeah, 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 yeah. Morgan great. Freeman did a hood film. This is what are you completely... talking about? Morgan Freeman did a hood film. Um, Denzel Washington did a hood film. Actually, Morgan Freeman's film was me. kind of a Lean, Lean on, on Me. me. Oh, yeah, I've Lean on Me. I've never seen it. Yeah. We'll throw that one, that in there, one was kind of the same thing as Denzel's. What was Denzel's car like called? Like Hard Times or something like that? I think I'll they it. at one point all the black top black actors Dude. had to play teachers who black oh, teachers God. who went back to the hood to teach of and was course. about to beat the shit out of these kids. Oh, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm trying like, to help you, God I'll damn whoop it. your ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now we're moving on Hard to lessons. Hard lessons. Yeah. I haven't seen that either. Yeah, yeah. God. I thought I'd seen them all. Yeah. I've got homework to do. So. Mm -hmm. So now we're moving on to the quick fire round. Quick fire. Which is more like filling in the blanks. Okay. We've switched up a little bit. I so I'm going like to say sentence. And close my eyes. <laughs> do what you got to do. Um, so whatever comes to your mind first. The actor I loved most as a kid was. The actor I loved most as a kid. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I'm gonna say I'm I'm gonna say Jim Carrey, but I gotta no. it gotta be somebody black though. I'm gonna say Will Smith. Yeah. Okay. I love that. Uh, the actor I respect most in 2023 is Don Cheadle. Love Don Cheadle. Why do you love? I mean, I love Don Cheadle. Man, I I love Don Cheadle because he he he. He stayed his path. Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I've seen most of his movies. Mm. You know, even mm. Traitor. Like, you ever seen Traitor? No. Where he's, um, he's like a part of, like, the, I don't know if it was, like, CS, uh, um, CIA or whatever. He's, yeah. like, an undercover agent. And he gets stuck in it. Like, the, his, the person who's supposed to get him out gets killed. So now he's stuck in that role. Oh, shit. And, like, now he's, like, fighting for his way out. And there's, like, a double cross thing where oh, they gosh. think he... Um, snitched on like they basically think he like caused treason okay. and treason in America and it's also like he's doing action in that movie oh brilliant like, wah, 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 wah. I love and it and this was before Don Cheadle became Don Cheadle, Cheadle. yeah yeah I oh, think I'll he's I think he's like the the black Philip Seymour Hoffman where he can just kind of morph into anything oh okay and, I love and that. now that he stepped into this space of comedy and he's just as great yeah yeah he's brilliant he's have you seen brilliant. Black Monday Black Monday oh I've seen God, Black I Monday Black have Black you seen Monday. House of Lies yes House of Lies brilliant okay. as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so I, was like, I, I say Don Cheadle's probably one of my favorites because just to watch his journey mm. and then what he's become now yeah. and, it's like, and he does actually really great like like you were saying mm -hmm. from comedy to drama mm -hmm. roles like I love it. Yeah, yeah I'm a big mm -hmm. fan. Yeah. I agree. Um, blank is Spike Lee's best movie. <sighs> Malcolm X. Love it. Yeah. Why Malcolm X? Because it's like a three-part movie. You see three different um, points of this dude's life, where you see mm. like him being a, like him as a kid and what drove him to be a pimp and mm. go to jail and how his life was over and then how he rebuilt himself to become this prominent black figure mm. but not that just went on to change uh, like lives of African Americans but just everyone yeah, you know what I mean exactly. just to watch that transition and uh, and Spike Lee capturing that mm. like it's to the point where like the guy who played like I'm saying the guy Denzel <laughs> the guy you better put some respect I know uh, right I'm like the guy because <laughs> the point that I tried to, the point I was trying to make was that people will confuse Denzel as the real Malcolm X. No, yeah. They were the showing point. me that movie yeah. in school, and yes. I'm seeing Denzel and other things like, oh, Malcolm X still <laughs> like him. Malcolm X didn't die. He's, he's still here. What are they talking about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, <clears throat> so no, I'll say yeah. Malcolm X. 
Hurricane. That, I love Remember Hurricane. Hurricane. That's a lot of people don't talk about yeah, yeah, yeah. that, but I, that's one of my favorite Denzel yeah. movies. When you when you grow up in foster care and group homes and stuff, they make you watch a lot of black people on hard times movies. A lot of black people locked up, dealing with oppression and shit, because they're like, hey, get used to this. Oh, my God. We need you to watch. <laughs> we need this you to get this persistent. Right? <laughs> that's my that's... type of humor, people. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they're okay. like, hey, I need you to tap I need you to, yeah. yeah. It's just, like game just, tape. Mm, yeah. That's some real manipulation going on there. Lovely. <laughs> Love it. Um, best fight scene in a film is? Best fight scene in a film. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this is, but it has to be a black film. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. It has to be a black film. Um... Or blade, with a black, there's yeah. a blade count. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think. What's that? What's that blade? Have you ever seen Blade? Of course, I love Blade. What's the one where he's fighting his father? Is that the third one? I think that's the third one. Yeah, that trilogy. Third. Yeah, he's fighting his dad. Yeah. That fight where he's in the room, and they got. I'm trying to remember it. Damn, this probably ain't my favorite. If I can't remember. No. <laughs> But just say Blade, that's fine. I'm going to say Blade. Just say Blade. He it has, has some really, really good, good fights. Yeah, anyway. anything Wesley Snipes is Absolutely. in and he's kicking ass is the best fight scene. How did he learn all that shit? Like, so good as well. Yeah. He wasn't, like, doing a shit black person's, like, martial arts. Yeah, he was, he like, like proper. Come on, sucker. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Nah, he was he's, actually... Yeah, yeah. yeah I did, was he fan. a martial arts guy before? That's was he a martial arts dude before and then he got into acting or did he learn it, like, while he was acting? I think he... As a kid, did it, I think. Mm. That's really good to know. That's, That's why he really does good. it so well, yeah, you know? Yeah, it comes anything natural. he's in. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Denzel, um, Demolition Man. Demolition Man, yeah. One of my faves. Um, good fight scene. I really like, I know this is off track, but the <laughs> fight scene with uh, Common and John Wick, Keanu Reeves. In yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought that yeah, was really yeah. good. Yeah, John Wick 2, John Wick Three, right? Because the fourth yeah. one just, it just came, came out. out. Yeah, it was three. Yeah. I thought that was a really good. Um, yeah, I didn't know scene. common. Can I know. Be I was like, like, like that. That's my yeah. that's my really pathetic uh, yeah. version. Yeah, of yeah. what was that? I don't know. I don't know. It uh, that's <laughs> as good as it gets, guys. <laughs> <laughs> that was Wing Chun right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is a bit of a saucy one. Best sex scene in a film is. Best sex scene in a film is. There's so many goddamn sex scenes in black mm. films especially growing up yeah the one that sticks out to me is jason lyric okay i remember my mom covering my eyes <laughs> she's like you can't watch this and i guess it's graphic is they outside they fucking on the side of the oh, convenience shit. store yeah you know what i'm talking about yeah 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 I, that's one i watched how's that young? romantic that's crackhead <laughs> next to a convenience store outside Listen. not in a car it's not it's not right but it's okay I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Every time I think of sex scenes, I always think of the funny ones. I never think about like yeah. the actual, the the graphic ones, yeah. or just the ones where there's a connection. Yeah, yeah. I always just think of the silly What's ones. What's the funny sex scenes? I don't know. Like usually in comedy films or like mm. the coming of age films, they always make like, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. like the guy comes too yeah. soon or. Mm-hmm. The boy. The wood, yeah, in the, the wood, yeah. and Eddie Murphy's always like, mm-hmm. I just find Eddie Murphy, like in Boomerang, yeah. when he's trying to get all, it's hilarious to me, yeah. I just find it very funny, um, maybe I should No, have, okay, but... see, sex is serious. It's serious? <laughs> no. I don't think nothing's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, she's like, the funny sex scenes, I'm like, what's funny? What's funny? It's, it's funny. <laughs> no, I get it. Um, the film with the best soundtrack. This had a really good soundtrack, Don't Be A Minute. Bad like, Boys too. That was good. Bad Boys 2 soundtrack is so legit that yeah. it's a good album. Yeah, yeah, on its own. American Gangster. Mm. Um, Get Rich or Die Trying. Yeah. Soundtrack is so... See, those are some of the best songs 50 Cent has created. Like, mm. uh, Hustler's, Am- Hustler's Ambition. Mm. You heard that yeah. song? Yeah, 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 yeah. song's yeah. great. Yeah. song is... A, it's it's the, my life anthem. <laughs> yeah. I've never sold drugs in my life. <laughs> But it makes me want. Oh yeah, yeah. I am. Uh, yeah, for some yeah. reason, when I'm listening to music, mm-hmm. I'm a drug dealer. I'm like, what you need? <laughs> like, I got I whatever you need. I don't at <laughs> I don't, all. I don't, I don't even don't. know how to get. Paracetamol's as good as it yeah. gets for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, the film I love, which no one would expect me to, is. Okay, 
and it still has to be a black film. Mm. The film I love that no one expects me to to like. I don't know what that would be for me. I don't know what that would be for me. I think people expect me to like all the weird shit. We too. like all the black movies. I love all Every the black single movies. one of them. No, I, I it, like um, I still try to convince my my friends that Medea's boo was funny. Okay. I went to see Medea's boo and I laughed <laughs> a bunch of times. Remember that her first Halloween movie, I, his first Halloween um, movie. But Medea is like a special. separate person to me. Like I grew up watching the plays. Like remember? I don't. I haven't seen you, any Medeas. You never seen any I, of Tyler I'm Perry so plays. No. Okay, so I grew up in churches, like the church culture, mm-hmm. and bootlegging is very popular. Oh, they, it's, they it's supposed to be godlike, well. but y'all stealing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all some thieves. It's okay when they do it. <laughs> yeah, it's okay when they do it's it. It's okay. It's fine. It's different. Yeah. It's different. So the most bootlegged thing when I was growing up was all of Tyler Perry's right. plays, and all his plays were funny. Okay. Like I'm talking about room applause. I didn't even know. Plays could be. I remember the first time I went to see a play, I was so let down. Oh, because just... Tyler Perry shit had people wrote like yeah. you didn't watch Tyler Perry's plays and people would be like, Wah! like giggled over it. And then I go see one of these Broadway plays. I'm like, this shit ain't funny. This is at not all. funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that would have been. Yeah, so I remember shocking. watching all of his plays, bootleg tapes, and him killing. And then um, going to see Medea's movie. It was me and a bunch of comics. And I, I swore I seen other people laugh. I'm like, oh, okay. yeah, this shit kind of funny. Oh, funny. <laughs> I think scene's funny. Ah, oh, damn. You know? <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Blank is the comedian I would most like to work with. Blank is the comedian that I would... It'll probably be Damon Wayans. But mm. does it have to be stand-up comic? It'll be, it'll be either Damon or Keenan, because I want to learn how to write like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they're absolutely talented. Man. That's a good answer. Mm. Well, thank you. That's a quick fire round. And quick fire. Quick fire. Um, and for those people who haven't seen Don't Be Menace, Wild, yeah. uh, what scene would it be that you would show them to entice them to watch the movie? The first opening scene, mm. just that scene, that it just shooting. sets the whole <laughs> movie, just the shooting. Yeah. It opens so ridiculous. It yeah. opens with a. This is the humor from here on out. Yeah. Like you see someone get shot. And then. <laughs> it's someone's birthday. It's on someone's <laughs> birthday. Then the fan, like everybody comes around. The mom makes everybody move and then goes, just say, like, I don't know this kid. <laughs> and then just drops his head on the ground and everybody leaves. That's hilarious. It's wild. That's wild. Yeah. That's so many jokes in that and so many reasons why that's funny. Um, yeah. It's not. It's not the one I would um, show. No, no, it's the one I would show. I'm saying okay. another scene that I really enjoyed because it, throughout the whole film, it's all mm-hmm. about message, messages. messages. But that ER scene, yeah. you know, the emergency room when he goes in and he's mm-hmm. like, you have to fill out these papers. Someone's Yo, burning sex. in the corner. Yeah, Someone's yeah, standing yeah, yeah, yeah. skeleton. Mm-hmm. I just was like, yeah. again, turning tragedy <laughs> yes. into comedy yeah. very well mm-hmm. because I feel like the, I mean, we have our own issues here. Yeah. Let's not get started. But the USA, pretty, pretty bad. Yeah. I mean, but what do you mean? Like in terms we fine. of... <laughs> no, we fine. No, we... We fine. We ain't doing bad. And then in terms of like their medical... Looking oh, after yeah. people. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean like... Yeah. Having... His, yeah, really yeah. annoys me every nah. time I see something uh, yeah. like that. People are dying, literally. So it's it's different over here? Like oh, yeah, you we can have, just go to the hospital? We have the NHS... Wait. So you can just go to the hospital and get seen, and yes. they'll treat you like you matter. Yeah. 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 Like no one's going to throw a bunch of paperwork no. at you. No. No. Oh wow. And you know, I don't believe they have it. A private... I, I want to. I, I think I'm. You're going to hurt yourself. I'm going to hurt myself. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just, yeah, just fix this. I just want to just, see this Just want to see. I mean, don't get me wrong. You might be waiting for hours uh, in emergency room. Okay. But yeah. you'll get seen. You'll get treated. Mm-hmm. You'll be helped. Oh. You have, yeah. Okay. All uh, right. But yeah, so uh, come come over here. <laughs> you'll get looked Look, after. I'm coming, I'm, I'm coming here more. Um, the shop scene as well. Shop scene. The shoot, which Where one? in the Korean, I want to say Korean, but the Asian. Yeah, yeah, when they shoot, they have the shootout. Yeah, they have yeah, the shootout, yeah, yeah. but the, the white guy is stealing stuff, yes. robs the, mm-hmm. the counter. That's funny. But he's following the black yes. people. The amount of times yeah. that happens, and it's like, don't worry about me. You need to keep your eye on this yeah. person over here. They're the ones doing the. Uh... And you know what? Yeah, that still happens. They still 
Yeah. 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 And it's just, it's funny how they were able to pick up all of these black experiences mm-hmm. and put them in one film. And put them in one film. Yeah. And, yeah, and make it, and keep it funny. And keep it funny. And exactly. keep it funny for everyone. Yeah. I, I try to get so many white people to watch that movie when they, when we, like, talk about our favorite comedies. Yeah. And I, and I go, don't be a menace. And they go, what? Really? And I go, y'all don't understand. Yeah. I'm like, just watch it. It's yeah. not a, a movie where you got to know black culture. It's just a yeah, yeah. funny I just, movie. I, which is what we're talking about. I yeah. feel like black films have that stigma mm-hmm. of like, it's just for black people yeah. and other films don't. Yeah. But, but I think that's on the network who packages them. Yeah, 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 you know? yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, yeah. did you notice Netflix doesn't do the, or at least over in America, in America it, they don't do the um, the black experience anymore. They oh. rebranded it. It's called like people of color or something. Oh no, we don't have that. I think we still have the black experience. Yeah, Even though not... I get annoyed with that. I'm like, what I'm are you like, doing with this? Like, this is for everyone. Yeah, and, like, just, if, if it's a rom-com, it's a rom-com. It's, that's it. Just put it in that just, genre and yeah. keep it moving. It's very mm-hmm. annoying. Because um, it deters people. People yeah. go, oh, I don't know if I want to watch this. I don't know if it's for me. Yeah, and that's yeah. what often comes out of our film club is that every mm-hmm. time we have a complete diverse mm-hmm. audience and a lot of the time they're like, oh my God, I didn't know I had missed this movie. Mm-hmm. I didn't know this person was a, a great actress. Or... I thought it was a black movie. I'll be watching yeah. Bollywood films. I, do, I grew up on Bollywood great. films, absolutely. Have you seen Triple R? I don't know them by name. Oh, you don't know them by name? No, I don't know them by name. You probably get confused. You're like, what the Which one? I just watch it if that makes any sense. You know, those films that you just kind of put on. Yeah. Like they're fun, lighthearted, nothing too serious, very dramatic. Yeah. I'm here for it. I watched it. There's one. Called, I don't know if it's called Triple R or whatever. It's just three R's in a row. R, R, R. And it's a four act movie. Oh my it's Lord. Like two, it's like three hours. Okay, it's like no, three hours and no 20 film minutes. should be over two hours. I, it's great. Okay. It's I'll great. Do Everybody it. got an origin story in this movie. <laughs> they, they start, start one again. story. <laughs> and then when you get attached to this person, they Onto switch the it off and then go to the next person. And then they show you how okay. it all comes together oh, in the okay. end. And then right before it makes this point, it just starts. Everybody just starts oh, dancing. Oh, I love a dance. Yeah, love a group dance. I'm, I'm here like, for oh, it. I love it. Yeah. Um, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have been an absolute pleasure. I know you've got a busy schedule. Mm-hmm. He's here to see the rest of London. I got to see I'm, the rest of London. I'm keeping him here all to myself. I gotta go. <laughs> Right. What are you doing after this? After this, I think we're going to get like tea. Love it. Uh, yeah. What is it called? Sundowners. Sun- That's what is it called? Sundowners. High tea. High, high tea. tea. Oh shit! We was told it's called sundowners. No, I was All like, right. what high tea. I was like, oh shit! I don't know this. <laughs> it was sundowners. It's okay, high so high tea. What does mm-hmm. that mean? Afternoon tea. Afternoon it's tea. High afternoon. Maybe maybe it's because it's right when the sun's the highest. Oh, okay. So around very that, like three here. o'clock. Yeah, that okay. three o'clock mark is the yeah. Oh, okay, so we're going to do that. Um, going to see Big Ben. What is it? Tower Bridge. So you're gonna walk everywhere. Oh, I love it. Yeah, you're dude, gonna yeah. You're gonna enjoy it. Hope Take some enjoy. pictures with some double decker buses. I'll do it. <laughs> Wild. Does that make it now? Like I used to judge people so much. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm the like, biggest tourist. You get a picture of this dumbass bus <laughs> now I'm in London. I'm like, this is a bus. <laughs> I'm the <laughs> biggest tourist when I go yeah. anywhere. Anyway, got to make sure you yeah. get all the sights in. But thank you so much. Um, I can't you. wait for you to come back, yeah. and I'll be able to join you in the next show. Wish you all the absolute best in everything you do. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.